Okay, so hello everybody. Um, I will just share the link to our notes as well in the chat if anybody doesn't have them. Um, we have an icebreaker in that document that basically asks how much um, experience you have with topics uh, with Project Binder or the tools underneath Project Binder, such as repo to Docker and mybinder.org. Lots of experience is not required. This is um, so that we can see which types of groups give similar answers. So don't worry if it's, I don't know anything, you will still be able to participate. Um, so please assign yourself an emoji, depending on your knowledge. Uh, that will be very important. That emoji will stick with you through um, this session. And I have some slides. That's the wrong button. So hello and welcome to the crowdsourcing community practices for reproducible computational environments in the cloud mini workshop session. Um, just to let you know what's going to happen here, well, a little bit of housekeeping at first. Um, we are operating under the SSI's code of conduct, so please do check familiar yourself, uh, familiarize yourself with that if you haven't already. I've already left a note about the main notes document as well. Please sign in and assign yourself an emoji to put, um, based on your knowledge. It doesn't matter if you don't know anything about these tools we're going to be um, discussing today. Um, we just want to see if certain groups of people will give similar answers. Um, we have breakout rooms. We will be going into breakout rooms. They will not be recorded, so please feel free to speak candidly within those if you need to. Um, and there is a live transcript as well. I believe the link for that is in the main notes document, but I also believe that that will not be available in the breakout rooms either. Um, so let me just give like a quick introduction um, to the, the team. Uh, my name is Sarah Gibson. Um, I am a Jupyter Hub team member and I'm also a 2020 SSI fellow as well. And um, my fellowship was around kind of increasing that diversity of programming languages um, that people know when they contribute to Project Binder. And this is sort of manifested itself in this survey we'll be running today in how do we best serve those different communities? And I wonder if my um, co-facilitators would just like to unmute and give themselves a very quick introduction as well, starting with Min. Yeah, hi, I'm Min. I've uh, been working on the Jupyter and Jupyter Hub projects for uh, a very long time. Um, and I'm just collecting information to make sure that we're building useful things. And uh, yeah, I work at uh, as a research engineer at uh, Simula Research Lab in Oslo in Norway. Thank you very much. Meg? Hello, um, I'm Meg Darty. I'm based in the US and I am, uh, I'm an SSI fellow this year. Um, my focus is on measuring user outcomes in research software. But here in my day job, I, um, we work with Jupyter Notebooks at the All of Us Research Program with biomedical data. So I'm very curious how other people use tools and what feedback they have um, to make the overall experience um, on my program better. Thank you. Thanks. Achintia? Hi all, uh, my name is Achintia. I am a community manager at the Alan Turing Institute. And while I'm not a developer on Jupyter and Binder, I'm an enthusiastic user and I'm hoping to help support others who are uh, using the tools as well. And very happy to help Sarah with, with today's uh, little mini workshop. Thank you very much. So what are we aiming to achieve? We're going to run a survey today. And what we hope to do is we want to build a collection of cross-community best practices. Um, Project Binder, Repo to Docker, mybinder.org. We serve a lot of different communities. 
and um, we don't aim to say how people should be setting up their um, computation environments. We aim to keep up with their with their best practices and automate them. But we can't do that if we don't know what best practices people are using. And because we're working cross communities, that's like a whole range of um, communities we need to keep in contact with. So we thought running a survey that people could um, contribute to would be an easier way to get that information. And we're hoping the results of this survey will um, help us gain better understanding of different areas of improvement that we can make, pain points where a community's best practices don't align with what Binder is expecting a user to input and such like that. And we're going to use this to generate specific and useful feedback. And we're also hoping to build stronger connection with active folk in these communities as well, so they can help us along the line and um, keep producing a useful tool. Um, so after this introduction, we are going to randomly assign breakout groups. We're going to then complete the survey in that breakout group. So you'll have a notes document as well as a Mentimeter presentation as well. That's going to last for about 40, 45 ish minutes. And then the last uh, five to 10 minutes, depending on how we well we get through the survey. And um, we have like a little meta feedback form um, on how this session went and how we could improve the survey as well. So I'm going to stop sharing for the moment and just ask if there are any questions. Nope, doesn't look like it. Um, the, there is a link to the slides um, in the main document as well. There is one more slide I forgot to show, which is where to find more information. There is a privacy policy, which is also linked from the main document um, and a participant information sheet if you'd like more information about what the survey is for and what we're gonna do. I also have a management repository for my, for my fellowship, which is where I'm collating a lot of this information. So you can find out more broadly about what I aim to do with my fellowship aside from this survey there. Hello, everybody. Um, thank you all for participating in that. I just have like one more survey for you to fill in. Um, and this is a meta feedback form. Um, basically telling us uh, how it went. Um, there's some accessibility questions in there as well, if that applies to you. If it doesn't, feel free to ignore. And there are also um, some a question um, around if you'd like to keep in touch with the binder team to help us continually improve repo to Docker and my binder and make sure we're keeping up to date with everything that's happening in your community in terms of computational reproducibility. Um, in the main document, there are links to our participation our participant information sheet and privacy policy that explain how we intend to look after that contact information if you choose to give it. It is a choice. You do not have to provide that information. And just a note on what we plan to do um, next with this information, um, with this survey. This has been, uh, running it at this event has been kind of like a pilot. And what we will do is we will gather your input from that um, feedback form and improve the survey where it needs improving and expand it where it needs expanding. And we will also rewrite it into a less interactive manner. And um, we plan to disseminate the link into wider groups, um, both in, uh, in the communities that use mybinder.org and um, elsewhere, so that we get more broader sampling of um, data from the computational reproducibility team. Uh, so uh, I thank you very much for participating in this pilot and providing your feedback on how it can be improved and be the most useful survey that it could be. Are there any last minute questions anybody has?
Uh, yeah, quick question. Again, in case whenever I ask a question, I am learning out something new, so maybe this already exists, and it'll be great. So, uh, one of the things with the MyMind.org is that it's limited in memory, right? Is there a quick, like, one button solution where I can give the repo and people can set up not MyBinder, but like a Jupyter Hub notebook just on their own machine? Uh, I mean, um... On their own machine, yeah, you could run repo to Docker locally, and um, yeah, it, yeah, yeah. It's not one button, but uh, repo to Docker takes the same inputs as uh, myminder.org, so it's a it's a command line tool right now. Okay, yeah, uh, I mean that's fine. Like if I can give, I mean, I guess I can put in a script and then tell them like you need Docker installed, and then this and. That's fine, but this gives them reproducible environments rather than you know trying to faff around with poetry or RN or whatever specific tool I'm using. Uh, you can also run repo to binder on a, on like a little server that you have. Is that correct? So you could then like yeah. Share I your... mean, if you if you have hosted servers, then yeah, I mean you could host yeah. uh, that. But uh, I think the scenario I'm imagining is mostly researchers who would have to work maybe offline or. They don't have you know high net connectivity, so it needs to be as local as possible. So, yeah, and as I said, as I was saying in our breakout room, which I will repeat for the benefit of the other participants here, I like to think of my binder.org as a communication tool, specifically because it is a free and public service. So think about this as like demonstrating um, like minimum viable solutions for your tool and to get people hooked um and like help them decide whether or not this package is for their workflow and then they still install it locally and and such like that um there is always is the option to run your own my binded um service as it is a, a an open source package that you are free to and then like once you do that it's like as many as much RAM as you're willing to give, but that takes a lot of um, in-house expertise and resources as well. So it's not always the greatest solution. And it's, by the way, the reason that the organization I work for now to ITC was set up because it takes a lot of expertise to run scalable Jupyter hubs in the cloud. So you can hire us to do it for you if you want. <laughs> Yeah, I remember I went to the Kubernetes workshop that he hosted, and it was great, but I had no idea of Kubernetes, so I was basically typing commands, okay, Helm install, and it's like, what's happening? Okay, it runs, but what happens? So, yes, this is... It makes you feel any better. It. Yeah, if it makes you feel any better, I still sometimes feel like that as well. <laughs> <laughs> Kubernetes is a beast. <laughs> Okay, we have one minute before the end of this session. I'd like to thank you all again for participating. Um, I hope this was in informational, enjoyable, fun for you. Um, and are we going straight back to the main room, Schweb, or is there a break? There's a 10 minute break. And then, so we're going back at 11.55. Um, so you'll need to go back to the notes document to use that, that link to go back into the main room. Brilliant. Thank you, everybody. Thanks. That was really, really interesting. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks very much. Bye.